Let my name stand among those who are willing to bear ridicule and reproach for the truth's sake, and so earn some right to rejoice when the victory is won. Louisa May Alcott the start of the Civil War, there were no organizations of trained nurses in the United States. It wasn't until the Crimean War in 1854 and the appointment of England's Florence Nightingale that the United States began training professional nurses for the Army. Women played a significant role in the Civil War. They, as trained professional nurses giving direct medical care in the field, as hospital administrators, or as attendants offering comfort. The exact number of nurses at work during the Civil War is unknown. It is estimated between 5,000 and 10,000 women offered their services to the men fighting in our country. For the first two years, the introduction of females into the male medical system was a civil war in itself. Women from various religious orders were also recognized caretakers of the sick, having experienced epidemics from natural disasters and prior wars. About 600 sisters from 12 Catholic orders served for both armies during the Civil War. Southern women also were required to answer the call. They were wanted to help their individual state's needs on a personal basis. Only four Confederate states had formal relief agencies. Aside from the lack of training most women had caring for the wounded, many of their tools were not up to the task either. Most nurses during the Civil War had to use whatever utensils they could get their hands on. Oftentimes they were old tools from hospitals or tools women would bring from their home. These gadgets were not even intended for medical use, but they served their purpose and got the urgent jobs done and saved many lives. In a world where there is so much to be done, I felt strongly impressed that there must be something for me to do. Dorothea Lynn Dix Dorothea Lynn Dix dedicated her life to improving the conditions of people in prisons, poorhouses, and the mental institutions volunteered for service and paved the way for all other women wanting to give their time to the Civil War fighters. On June 10, 1861, she was appointed Superintendent of Female Nurses of the Union Army by Secretary of War Simon Cameron. She was asked to create a volunteer nurse corps and regulate supplies that were donated to the troops. She and her assistant nurses were given no military rank. Like many others, the 60-year-old Dix was not trained in nursing but had extraordinary household skills when it came to treating injuries and caring for injured soldiers. As the war progressed, there was a greater need for nurses on the battlefield. On July 24, 1862, Circular Order No. 8 was issued laying down Dick's strict requirements for appointing her nurses. Candidates were required to be between 35 and 50 years old, follow rules, people of experience of, with good character and strong health. Nurses were guaranteed compensation of 40 cents a day and required to serve a three-month minimum period of service. Many nurses rose to fame during the Civil War because of their actions on the battlefield. A ball had passed between my body and the right arm which supported him, cutting through the sleeve and passing through his chest from shoulder to shoulder. There was no more to be done for him, and I left him to his rest. I have never mended that hole in my sleeve. I wonder if a soldier ever does mend a bullet hole in his coat. Clara Barton Clarissa Clara Barton was known as Little Lone Lady in Black Silk during the Civil War. Unlike many others, she worked as her independently away from all relief and aid societies. She also gave her time to both the Union and Confederate sides. Clara Barton will forever hold her own place in medical history with her work for establishing the American Red Cross. Marianne Bell, better known as Mother Bickerdyke, went to war wanting to serve her country on the battlefield. She was soon refused because women were not allowed to fight in combat. Mother Bickerdyke began working in the sanitary department for the Union Army. She served in 19 battles and at many times under heavy gunfire. After battles, Mary Ball would often walk the battlefields at night looking for anyone still clinging to life. December 1862. On the 11th, I received a note from Miss H.M. Stevenson telling me to start for Georgetown the next day to fill a place in the Union Hotel Hospital. Mrs. Ropes of Boston was matron, and Miss Kendall of Plymouth was a nurse there, and though a hard place, help was needed. I was ready, and when my commander said march, I marched, packed my trunk, and reported in B that same evening. Journal entry from Louisa May Alcott. Louisa May Alcott was hired by Dorothea Lynn Dix in 1862 and served a short term of only six weeks as a nurse in a small Georgetown hospital. 
Her service here was cut short because she became sick with pneumonia. During her illness, Alcott began compiling all of her writings describing the war into a children's book that was later published. The American Civil War was fought over a span of five years from 1861 to 1865, and it is estimated 620,000 American men and boys were killed. Even though this was the bloodiest war in American history, many more casualties could have been recorded if it wasn't for the courageous help of many American women. The nurses of the battlefield saved numerous lives. Many people do not give them the credit they deserve for their selfless acts. These women may not have fought in head-to-head -head combat, but their lives were always in danger because they were saving lives on the front lines. Many of these women wrote their own page in American medical history.